I used to think that we Bhutanese always pride ourselves as having a highly gender egalitarian society. I think that is true to some extent due to strong spirits of a majority of our women. However, on deeper observation, I now realize that we have been just ignorant of how much our women contribute to our nation building through endless unpaid works and how some of them have been suffering silently through generations. There is no doubt that Bhutanese women in general are experiencing far better lives today. In comparison, I keep hearing from my own parents and elderly about how difficult their lives were just a few decades ago. Dosbarsa, Nee <laughs> The <laughs> Nebadi, <laughs> Kalobzambaranae, the Pujara Mandola, Tachim Nadunzo Bed, 
केटी उमेर सानो हुन्थ्यो बुद्धि पुग्दैन थियो अनि कुट्नु यस्तो गर्थ्यो नि त बुढाले घरमा आएर चाहिँ अब कुट्नु कति काम गरेर दुःख पाएर गलेको हुन्थ्यो बुढा उता गएर के अरे अर्को केटीसँग लागेर आयो के अरे घरमा निहु खोज्यो बुढीलाई कुट्यो अनि हो त्यो भएपछि अब सबै थियो घरको काम पनि बुढीले गरो गर्दाखेरि त्यति हो भएर दुःख हुन्थ्यो र चाहिँ सर अहिले सब आमेरले बुझ्दा गा चाहिँ अम्सुति तप माध्यम दिएको चाहिँ म सेवा चिन्ह गा चाहिँ कि ड्र दि गराङ दिदी लुलुता दिदी नि दिदी ड्र जुख भक्ति दिने दिदी त्यो भा कुन्थे जो गोगी साखा र जुत दि बेसे छ रे त्यो नेखा दुसे सुदला त के फोज बेगले खरु कचिरा बेरु कचिरा काते जुत दि बेरु त जिमी के खतान दिम बेमि मिन्दो तेंगा चम्स बेसी बेले दिन त छिखले जो कचि लाछु कुचिरा जिसरे रुके खतान दिम बेउमे While the COVID-19 incidentally banned social gathering of clubs, karaoke and drawings, still then the risk of STD remains high if preventive measures and advocacy is not undertaken. I heard that one of the most common problem of family fluid are husband spending money on alcohol while their kids and wife remain almost hungry at home. I think the COVID-19 is a case where we have learned clearly that we have not done enough. For instance, we have read in the newspaper that the domestic violence cases have been increasing. Then we have to consider that many women must have been suffering silently, not reporting their cases. Stories of hardships are very normal to hear, but uh, it is good that we are at least in Bhutan, where we are ruled by very far-sighted kings who ensures very stable government for its people and us women. Otherwise, when I look at the situations of other countries such as Middle East, I feel so sad for women's conditions in these countries. We have now developed an accelerated mother and child health policy to address the health of both the mother and child to ensure a healthy mother and a healthy child and ultimately healthy adolescent population who will contribute as healthy adults for a healthy nation. We have another program, the Adolescent Health Program, that looks at adolescent sensitive issues like adolescents' nutrition, sexual and reproductive health needs, and um, mental health issues of the adolescent. All these uh, informations will be very useful for us to um, address the issues related uh, to the violence against women. I think today most Bhutanese people understand the issues of domestic violence. This has been possible due to the efforts put in by various government agencies like the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Education, NCWC and NGOs like Renew. In Bhutan, one of the key challenges is the very low representation of women in decision-making roles, be it in politics, in governance or in leadership. It is important that women are involved in the decision-making process and not merely treated as beneficiaries. The National Key Result Area 10 of the 12th five-year plan clearly reflects the Sustainable Development Goal 5, which is on gender equality and empowerment of women and girls, and it has very clear targets on preventing and eliminating gender-based violence. While it will take a long time for gender parity and gender equality to be achieved, especially in the areas of decision-making, in the areas of economic empowerment, and also in the areas of the elimination of gender-based violence, the fight must go on and all the service providers need to act together. I think when I first saw this book, I was just captured by the images, but like actually taking time to read the stories. Like it's taken me on a whole roller coaster of emotions. Like. You know what? What hit me the most was about the child marriage. So I kept reading it, and it's hard to believe that this is actually non-fiction and it's someone's reality. Sad, but it's most disheartening. The penal code of Bhutan has been amending so many laws, but despite the fact, the girls are still lacking. And to think like Bhutan has come so far, especially with our like you know developmental like the progress, but the fact that the, these problems, these issues, are still a problem to this day. There's always new problems arising, 
So I think one of the serious problems you see today in this day is social media. So you, people meet online and they develop a relationship there, right? That you don't even meet them in person, you don't even have to meet them in person. And then I think when they do meet them in person, I guess they turn out to be really different. So I think majority of women uh, go through that problem. You're right, like, you know, as you said, like, you know, development brings, like, new problems as well. And, you know, even as a country, like, we have, like, our government agencies and, like, organizations like Renew, like, advocating for women's rights. But at the end of the day, it's still up to the woman to speak up for themselves. You know, you can, you have a platform, but if there are no speakers on it, like, you can't do much. So I think as a nation, we still have a long way to go. With cross-national happiness concept as a guiding principles, Bhutan is known to have most progressive policies and legislations with regard to rights and protection of women and girls and children. Yet we see heartbreaking stories of violence against women and children repeating over and over again. Therefore, we can not be complacent, but ask ourselves, remind ourselves, challenge ourselves, why are these stories not getting old? and how each one of us help not to hear these stories. It boils down to the mindset, the attitude of each one of us towards the social issues. This clearly shows we need to do a lot before we realize our goal to have a just, equitable and happy family in a society. So Renew commits to continue working with the community people at the grassroots through education and information under the benevolent leadership of Her Majesty Yerim Sagi Chodhu and of course support from national and international partners.